Hey, I have a quick update for you about the power budget. I'm going over this now because I'm designing the electrical power system and picking out solar cells for this CubeSat. So I need to know roughly how much power I'm consuming, if I'm consuming too much, and if I need to cut back in any places. So I think you'll recognize this schematic from the last video. And I've gone ahead and marked it up with the power draws that each component would take if it was on 100% of the time. So just going through them real quick. We have the temperature sensor it draws, which for all eight of these sensors would draw something around 1.8 milliwatts. The magnetometer would draw about 1.5 milliwatts if on all the time. The gyroscope would draw 2.8 milliwatts if it was on all the time. And the sun sensor would draw, uh, per sensor, 7.8 milliwatts. The attitude control system is a little bit up in the air, but I estimate it would draw 100 milliwatts per axis. So if all three axes were on 100% of the time, it'd be drawing 300 milliwatts. The watchdog is in the nano nanowatts, so it, it's practically free. The 10 mega, megahertz crystal is 13 milliwatts. The STM32, uh, I'm estimating around 33 milliwatts for this. This is assuming one half of the power, or one half of this 33 milliwatts figure comes from the chip being on at full power at 40 megahertz, and half the time it'll be in sleep mode or stop zero. Otherwise, the CAN transceiver looks like it draws something around 56 milliwatts during transmission and 2 milliwatts where, when it's in standby. And now for some of the bigger numbers, we have 150 milliwatts for the GPS. Iridium satellite communication takes something around 800 milliwatts. The SD card, it's, I've been coming up with a whole bunch of different numbers, and I don't think I'll have a straight answer until I actually measure how much power it consumes, but it seems to be in the hundreds of milliwatts for writes and reads. The MRAM, however, is relatively low power with tens of milliwatts for a read and something like 40 milliwatts for a write. Oh, and the 32 kilohertz crystal is in the microwatts range and again is practically free. So let's highlight the components that actually are drawing a significant amount of power that I actually need to care about. On this side, the sun sensor at 7.8 milliwatts per sensor for a sensor that might be on consistently all of the time, times 6, or roughly roughly 47 milliwatts. Uh, for a sensor that might be on all the time, that's somewhat significant, and maybe I need to look at replacing this sun sensor with something else. The attitude control system, 100 milliwatts. This magnet torquer per axis. I'll have a video coming up soon about how this magnet torquer might actually just need to be replaced altogether because... I don't think it's going to work for the for the antenna pointing situation that I'm in. It doesn't actually solve my attitude control problem. So, more to come on this. The GPS, while it consumes 150 milliwatts, will only actually be on for a fraction of the time. Maybe you, I only get a GPS fix every hour to make sure my time is synchronized. In that case, this drops down to tens of milliwatts and becomes negligible. The Iridium satellite communications, Iridium modem, 800 milliwatts, of course this is the heavy hitter. How much do I want to transmit? How much power am I going to be consuming all of the time? Or how much power is going to be spent communicating? This is key to figuring out my power budget. The power that I can generate and whatever I have left over, this will determine how much I can actually transmit. And the MRAM, while it takes um, tens of milliwatts to read and write, this is an activity that will not be consistent. Its power down state is much lower. There's not too much concern here. For the STM32 main computer itself, 33 milliwatts, this is an always on number. This is pretty low and it might, it might drift up a little bit higher depending on how long it, it has to be up at full power. And it might actually end up drifting lower if I can run this chip in sleep mode most of the time. We'll see how that all shakes out once I actually get into software. Let's talk solar panels. In my first video, I showed off this little solar cell here, which is some import cheap, extremely cheap solar cell, and it is a little bit less fragile than a Pringle. It breaks extremely easily, and while something like this is very cheap, I don't have any sort of specs as to how well this performs. 
And while I'm sure there are smaller solar cells out there, remember that the final size, a 9 by 9 centimeter side of a CubeSat is this big. And at least this solar cell, it's a little bit too big to be able to fit multiple of them conveniently. I could, of course, break them into smaller sections to fit, but that's a little bit tricky, and I'd prefer not to have to do that. Of course, the traditional space-rated solar cells from a place like Spectrolab, these are the trapezoidal-shaped solar cells that you might often see on a CubeSat. I am assuming that their grade A solar cells are outside of my price range. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It'd be great if Spectrolab solar cells were cheaper, but Considering that you have to ask them for the pricing, I'm going to assume that they are a little bit expensive. They might sell grade B solar cells, which I'm going to be asking them to see if they'll sell to somebody like me, and maybe those will be within my price range. But if that doesn't work out, I have another option. There's these little solar cells, these 23 millimeter by 8 millimeter cells from IXYS, specifically the... specifically the... KXOB25 solar cells. Now these, I don't have them with me, they're roughly this big, and again this is a 9 by 9 centimeter, roughly the size of a side of a CubeSat. You can see that I can stack multiple of these little solar cells around. They are 25% efficient monocrystalline cells. Said I'm looking at roughly three quarters of a watt or 0.75 watts per side of my CubeSat. So assuming only one side of the CubeSat is actually facing the sun, I would be getting just under one watt of power into the CubeSat, which far exceeds the total I have right now. The amount that I had calculated here, which was roughly 300 milliwatts to 400 milliwatts. So I said I was working on the EPS, and here is a very rough schematic of what I am planning on doing. So here is a rough schematic. We have solar cell inputs here, which I'm planning on putting each panel or each side of the CubeSat into a single maximum power point tracking 5 volt boost converter, which outputs onto um, these O-ring ideal diodes. So in theory, these diodes will combine all the power from all the solar cells if they are all generating power at the same time. And the reason I want to have individual maximum power point tracking uh, chips here is that since I'm making the assumption that a single side of this CubeSat will, will always be exposed to the same amount of light, that way its maximum power point voltage is always the same, so I can use a pretty simple chip to track that maximum power point spot. So with all of these ideal diodes oaring together all of the different, it'd be six sides of, uh, of solar cells, oaring together six of these uh, five volt power rails, we get a single five volt solar output. And I have this going into two different battery chargers. Uh, and these battery chargers have what's called a power path. So even if the battery was removed, um, power can flow directly through into the rest of the system. The idea being that if a battery dies, the satellite can continue to operate even without the battery. Um, and I have two of these. I have two batteries, two battery chargers, just in case a battery dies or a battery charger fails. Just redundancy for whatever can go wrong. And then again, I have the outputs of these battery chargers going into another ideal diode and this output here is going to be the system output which would um, which would be either 5 volts from the boost converters or if there is no solar battery or no solar input at all Anyway, that's all I have for now. Keep an eye out for my next video where I talk about how the attitude control system uh, using magnet torques only has a pretty big flaw, uh, especially combined with how I plan to use the Iridium satellite constellation.